You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hello. Shalom. <laughs> Welcome to Indeed. another awesome episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul. My name is Rob. And this is the first time we have recorded in over three weeks. It is. Which it's is crazy. a little, it's a little, it kind of understands why we're a little slow to pick up. Yeah, I think I put a couple of training wheels back on today just to I make sure. I feel that way too. Whatever that means, I don't know. <laughs> but this is episode number 580. 580, that means we are 20 away from giving away another membership to the Drone You. And that's true. Man. It, it, this community grows at such a rate, it's almost, uh, hmm, I don't know the right word, but unprecedented, well, it's crazy. It really is. And I love I love hearing, you know, we've, we've gotten some negative feedback about some strategies for realtors and whatnot, and I totally understand where they're coming from. But I've also heard some really positive stuff about, you know, people who have gone to other schools. In the last week, I've trained three pilots or two pilots at the field. Mm -hmm. And one had come from Embry-Riddle and one had come from another school. Really? Whom I won't mention that was on Shark Tank. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> no. Um, and one person said they really love the Drone <laughs> yeah. U because of the practical aspect of the training that most of these other schools, even if you go to the, like even, you know, Dart Drones and whatnot, if you go to them, they can teach you the basics, but they can't really teach you how to fly smoothly, the the intricate details. Why is to, that? I, I think, think I know why. I think I know why, but I, uh, I'm not there, so I don't know. I'm not them. I don't really well, know. But my guess, fair enough. my guess mm -hmm. is, I think it comes down to one simple fact, and that is these other schools do not have anyone who actually flies for a living. They don't understand the nuances, the problems, the mistakes, the uh, the learning how to fly through trees at 20 mile per hour winds because you're being forced to by a director, and you have to learn how to negate all stress and emotion and just focus on flying. Like It's kind of like it takes me back to college, right? So I went to college um, here in Albuquerque at UNM. And I remember we Alumni. Had a, a lot of professors, a lot of good professors, but there's one in particular that stands out way above the rest. Mm -hmm. And that is because teaching was something that he did for the love of teaching. He ran a business and it, it was an entrepreneurial class. And so he ran businesses every day. That's what he did. And then he would come teach us. And the experience that he gave us and the things that we learned from him were exponentially more profound than what we learned from the lifetime professor. Great people, very smart, learn some things, but just not the same level of learning. You know, I think it comes down to understanding people's why, uh, like in that book that we were supposed to read. I don't know if you read that book yet. <laughs> Sorry, just wanted to throw that up. I don't out know there. what book you're talking about. <laughs> that, that one that Chris Kenning gave us. Um, uh, I think it starts with why, you know, why people are in it. And and, I, and I'm not trying to throw you into the bus, Rob. I'm just trying to say that I, to prove your point, if you really want to understand where you're going to get the best information, I think it really comes down to understanding what is the purpose of the individual behind the whole thing. Like, what is their why factor? What is You mean the why of the, the professor in my story's case? Totally. The teacher in Drone U's case well, or anybody's case? Well, yeah. In, in, yeah. in any business, right? If you want to get the best, you want to find people who care about what they do. And really the best way to understand if people care is to figure out what is their why factor. Yeah. Like you the know? professor I referred to, why was he there? Clearly, it was because he loved teaching mm -hmm. and he loved passing on the knowledge that he had gained and the experience that he had gained. There was no other reason for him to be there. It's, he didn't need the money. Yeah. In fact, he was a millionaire. So he was there to pass on his knowledge, which I love, love, love that attitude. You got, I do too, man. I really do. And, you know, I'm kind of going into this because we're about to start sending invites out for the Drone U Elite. And the Drone U Elite is going to be essentially... Um, drone use partner pilots, people that we're willing to send jobs out to. They're the highest vetted pilots. They can also train other drone you members so that we can allow for trainings all over the country. Um, and I only want to bring people into drone you who are in this for all the right reasons. And, you know, that's why recently we talked about, you know, Keenan, and I'm sure Keenan's like, 
Paul, email me back because <laughs> we have a lot to talk about. <laughs> um, well, I but, know we got to get agreements to him. There's, uh, there's, all there's of a stuff lot of stuff do. that we have to get rolling. Um, but you know, Rob's been out of the office for a week now, and uh, we're kind of ramping things up for the fly-in and the drone you elite is part of the fly-in. But going back to Keenan, the reason I wanted to bring him on is because he has a very deep and passionate drive to him about mm -hmm. getting these tools into the hands of firefighters into the hands of police officers. Right. Um, in fact, uh, in a document that I'm still, Buzz is going to kill me, um, that I'm still working on for uh, the Rancho Cucamonga Fire Department and creating their like, their how-to guide, which we weren't really tasked to do. No. And I know I promised it and you were like, you shouldn't have done that. Like, <laughs> you don't have to do that for them. And I'm like, yeah, I know, but I care about them and I care about what they're doing. And Keenan, That really makes it sound like I don't care about them, which isn't true. No, not at <laughs> so all. No, no, take no, that Rob, exchange. No, no, no. Rob is just always like, context. Call, get rid of distractions. Don't overpromise. <laughs> like, you do so much for people already. And it's funny because I say that to you too all the time. Um, but he cares. And, you know, I want every Drone U Elite member to care and be in this for the same reason. And uh, I think that's what makes Drone U fundamentally different. Experienced pilots, they actually run businesses. They're experienced, but they also care. And uh, anyway, I don't need to go on a soapbox any longer about caring and sharing and why factor. But if you are in this business, living the drone life, make sure you're in it for the right reasons. And the right reason could be just the fact that you want a better a better life. You want to be outside more often. You want to be traveling and, you know, keep things new and refreshing. And that's totally okay. But I think that you'll find this very unfulfilling if you're in it for the money. Well, yeah. And if you're in it for the money, I don't know, you can probably do different things for more and better money. Yeah. At least for the foreseeable if you want to future. Be a, if you want to be a sociopath, just go into trading. You don't have to talk to anyone. There's no emotion involved. I mean, I've watched a guy lose a half a million dollars in 10 seconds before and it would just the, you know, sweat off his back. No big deal. That's funny. <laughs> I think you just called me a sociopath. No. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, okay, kidding. let's define a sociopath, right? Because uh, this is something I was like, I was like, you know, someone once called me a sociopath and I was like, whoa, like, what does that even mean? And I finally understood it. And what it means is essentially someone who goes into social or business situations with absolutely zero emotion, zero feeling, mm. zero care for other people. It's all, it's all logic. There is nothing else that comes into play. Wow, we are so rambling today, but just one more little ramble as it relates to investing. You absolutely are trying to remove the emotion out of trading. Isn't that funny? Hard to do. Mm -hmm. Very hard to do. We do have a question oh, today, Paul. Oh, well, uh, let's uh, stop the ramble and get to the question. <laughs> <laughs> we probably ought to do that. Thanks for hanging with us, guys. Hello, my name is Arden, and I live out of Kansas, and uh, basically I'm looking into the market of real estate, inspections, um, basically, just really everything you can possibly get into. Um, I'm, I basically work full time, and then during the time off, during every day, and then also the weekends, I'll be devoting all my time into focusing on jobs and so forth. And uh, it's really windy here, so I was wondering, I guess, what would be the best drone? I'm looking at the Inspire, just because of the wind and so forth, and wanting to shoot the best quality and also just blow the you know other competition out of the water. Well, we can relate to the whole wind thing. Springs here are very, very windy. Yeah. In fact, I feel like the longer time that goes by as I am a pilot, the more depressed I get when I see overcast days. <laughs> yeah. Although the so, overcast is nice. It's the wind that's yeah, brutal. Yeah, it really is the wind that was brutal. In fact, last night I could hear the surfboard that's attached to my wall in the lounge moving literally because the house was moving from all the wind. But this guy seems like he's he's got his life on the right track. And I think that you can tell that because if you listen to his question very carefully, it sounds like he's sitting in a we like a, in a like a wooden swing. Or yeah, something. wooden swing. Maybe or on his front porch. What are those, uh, those rocking, chairs. rocking chairs? That's what it sounds like. Those glide <laughs> chairs, maybe. <laughs> it does. Sounds like you can hear something uh -huh. kind of. I think this guy knows how to relax. Um, <laughs> which I love it. Totally distracts me from this question. <laughs> Totally forgot already. <laughs> oh, man. All right, Rob, why don't you go ahead and... All right, so what is the best drone <laughs> for the wind? We're flying in the wind. He's thinking about an Inspire 1. He wants to have good quality, not just the ability to fly in the wind. He wants to blow away the competition. Great attitude. 
All right, so let's talk about something really quick. Um, if you're going to have a serious drone business, this should be something that you think about very, uh, very much so when you are considering which drone to buy. Uh, why? Because the more days that you can fly, the more opportunity for business that you have. Now, everyone knows you can't fly every single day of the year. But depending on where you live, you're also limited by how often you can fly simply by the weather. Now, here in New Mexico, we can still have three statute miles of visibility, so we can still technically fly, but we can also have a 30 to 35 mile an hour sustained wind. So what's the best drone to handle these winds? Well, if you have taken one of our really basic classes that's probably three years old now, you'll learn the basics and differences between the quads, hexacopters, and octocopters, and coaxial octocopters. You'll learn why coaxial setups are absolutely the very best setup for being in the wind. It's the most stable setup. You'll learn about low pressure, high pressure between the motors and how that works. Um, you'll also learn in this class why hexacopters and octocopters are better in the wind um, and they're also better for redundancy purposes um, i will say though most people are limited to quadcopters so if you're buying a quadcopter and you are in the sub five thousand dollar range which is most people including myself for a very long time um, that being said the phantom 4 pro like uh, essentially the the growth in the Phantom series has been more and more capable and accurate in information and ability to fly. So hmm. the Phantom 4 Pro, even over the Phantom 4, in my opinion, mm -hmm. handled the wind a lot better. But you're getting a lot more notifications now, like wind speed too high, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. If you train in the wind, you'll have confidence in the wind. In fact, I would say all those trainings we did last week were all in yeah. the wind. And everyone was like, just seeing you and your demeanor as we're standing here, makes me wonder why I'm always so nervous flying. And I'm like, you really have to understand that you are your own biggest uh, inhibitor. Right. And whether, you know, you hate the, the saying or not, it's all in your head. It really is all in your damn head. Yeah. So well, whether you want to believe it or not, it's a fact. So <laughs> in fact, we are I human. Think, absolutely. But I think the... the the reality is you can get to the point where you use the wind to your advantage. That's exactly for right. For shots, et cetera. That's exactly right, which is what we talk about attitude mode in the Don't Crash course with the Mavic Pro, with the Phantom, the Phantom 4 Pro, and soon to be the Inspire 2. Um, I actually think the very best drone for wind is the Inspire 1, not the Inspire 2. Even though the Inspire 2 is just like the Phantom series, we got more accurate data, more capability in the wind. Um, but the issue... Why I choose the Inspire 1 over the Inspire 2 is very, very simple. With the Inspire 1, you can click and drag your finger all over the screen, mm. float in the wind in attitude mode, and get these beautiful cinematic shots without touching the sticks whatsoever. Even if you have you know, super jittery hands because you're super nervous in the wind, it won't matter mm -hmm. because you just use your finger and you click and you drag. And you get these Pretty beautiful sweet. pans and tilts and whatever you want while you're just floating in the wind. Yeah. You reset your camera. And you're good to go. Now, DJI took the ability to reset your camera out of the Inspire one. Like they're trying to negate the, like someone turning the camera all the way around and then being able to reset it. Bad on you, DJI. Um, in fact, I will never update my software on the Inspire one ever again. So Literally? I literally will never update the firmware or the software on the Inspire one ever again. Wow. So, um, cause once you do that, you can't go backwards, right? It's very difficult to go backwards. Okay. You can go backwards. Um, but I don't really recommend doing that. So if we're looking at all the phantom lines, the phantom four pro is going to be very capable in the wind. If I had to rate the current mainstream relevant drones, as far as wind capability, I would put the Mavic pro at the lowest point with sure. the breeze. They're both get yeah, pretty similar. They can handle you know, 15 mile an hour winds. I've seen some people be like, oh, I've seen Paul fly this in 20 mile an hour winds. I'm going to do it myself. And then they get a gust of wind and it flips over. Ouch. Um, and once it flips over, unless you're at least 350 feet in the sky, you're not going to recover. And so, you're not going to be 350 feet in the sky. Chances are most you're not. likely. Yeah. So the next capable, I would say is the Phantom 4. And then the next capable after that is the Phantom 4 Pro. Hmm. The Phantom 4 Pro, for whatever reason, was just w way more accurate in its GPS location, way more accurate in its hover ability, um, and also way more accurate in its elevation hover, uh, which is really cool. Again, the Inspire 1 is even more capable than the Phantom 4 Pro. It's my favorite drone to use in the wind. 
I think it is the most capable drone in the wind mm -hmm. as far as its flexibility and practicality. Right, and obviously there are limits to this. So what's the limit wind-wise for maybe the Pro and the Inspire 1? The Inspire 1, the, the highest winds I've ever flown the Inspire 1 in was 40 mile an hour winds. And it was 35 wow. mile an hour sustained, 40 gusts. And that was in Colorado. And you were probably working pretty hard at that. I mean, it was probably... It takes an extreme amount of focus. Exactly. It really does. You got to have someone there watching the drone too, because what I do is I'll fly it out into the wind. I'll let it float back towards me mm -hmm. and just use the camera the whole time and then do so at varying altitudes and get different camera shots. And you also and probably need to pay closer attention to batteries because Much the drone's closer. working harder. It's using the batteries faster. Mm -hmm. Something to be very aware of. Yep. And I, you know, I love it when people come out to our trainings and they've already watched the Don't Crash courses because they know all my little secrets about flying. Mm -hmm. um, but if you know the 3.60 secret, if it's a really windy day, 3.70. Yeah. So, and I'm not going to tell all you listeners what that means if you don't know already, because you should check it out in the course. And that's just one little reason as to why learning from experienced trainers makes a huge difference than learning from someone who just read the manual halfway. So <laughs> anyway. Yeah, absolutely. That makes a lot of sense. So I, I wanted to ask you, um, you mentioned sort of that $5,000 threshold, which keeps you in the Inspire 1 range. Maybe an Inspire 2 is right around there, depending on how you outfit it. Let's say you have a bigger budget. What would you do then? Probably get an, an M600. Okay. So um, if I had a bigger budget, I'd probably just build my own drone, to be honest with you. Um, but most people are not going to build their own drone. So no. I would say the M600 is definitely the, um, how do I say this not nefariously? Um, the M600 is the best drone in the wind for new to intermediate pilots. Okay. But for a pilot like me, I would never buy an M600. I would probably get an Alta 8 because the M600 is pitch limited, it's roll limited, it's heavily software limited. It's like having an EcoBoost truck that's governed at 40 miles an hour. Okay. And EcoBoost... It ain't going to stop at 40 miles an hour. I might suggest you actually go that <laughs> route, Paul. <laughs> I've driven with you. <laughs> not, I haven't driven that crazy in quite some time. That's not a bad idea, actually. Actually, this morning I saw some old suburban housewife <laughs> using the shoulder of the road to pass people on Paseo. Oh, wow. Yeah, I, n I never do that. So you got to give me some credit there, okay? She, she had to get to her tennis match, Paul. Oh, I said, I literally <laughs> called the police this morning and I was like, this lady's going like 90 and a 45 on the shoulder. And when he calls the police about somebody else's driving, it's it got to be really be bad. Really bad. <laughs> yeah, there was no answer. Must have been busy. <laughs> yeah, they were watching you. <laughs> Even Mark from APD still tells me, just slow down, damn it. Seriously. <laughs> so, I've taken that advice because I just got a ticket. So yeah. <laughs> even just say I, when we go to lunch, Paul's driving, even I'm walking. If, even if you uh, work for the police and do drone stuff, they will still give you speeding tickets. <laughs> yes, they will. <laughs> Don't expect favors. That's no, all I got to say. Anyway, guys, I hope this uh, rant and rave <laughs> was was uh, informative and valuable and if it was please share please like the podcast and subscribe to us on youtube which is the button over there so check that out but again guys thank you for listening my name is paul my name is rob and you're listening to the ask drone you podcast